You know, money is just basically freedom and opportunities. And when you don't have any, your freedom and opportunities are super limited. And I just, I was, first of all, it's really boring being broke. So I was really bored. And I was also really disappointed that in myself that this was the best I could do. are listening to the redefining wealth podcast with patrice washington this is where you come every week to learn what it means to chase purpose not money if you're brand new here meaning you're not an og listener but you want to be a purpose chaser that's what we call ourselves then welcome to you here's what you need to know this is a community that believes that wealth is so much more than just money and material possessions we truly believe in the original 12th century definition of wealth which says it's about the condition of well-being. This woman's book, this in particular, this book right here was a game changer for me. And I'm so excited that Jen Sincero is here today um, so that I could share with her how that book literally changed my life and my business. And I can't wait to dive in. But before we do, let's get into the affirmation of the week. You gotta speak positivity into your life, into your day. You gotta affirm positivity. You gotta affirm abundance. You gotta affirm yourself to wealth. This week's affirmation is, I control my money identity. The stories I tell myself about my finances create the realities I experience. These stories are shaped by my beliefs, my beliefs create my thoughts, and my thoughts determine my actions and therefore habits. If I don't like any part of my financial life today, at any point I can choose the money identity that will help me live the life I desire. And as I evolve, I continuously have the right to re-examine and redefine what I want for myself in that moment. I understand that my identity can shift with just a decision. Declare with me today, I control my money identity. Jen Sincero is a number one New York Times bestselling author, speaker, and someone who's helped millions transform their personal and professional lives via her work. Her number one New York Times bestseller, You're a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life, reigned on the New York Times bestseller list, forget this, over four and a half years, selling over five million copies worldwide. And then she had the follow-up. This is it here. You're a badass at making money. Master the mindset of wealth came out in 2017. I was introduced to it in late 2018 and it changed the game for me and has continued to change the game. And we'll get into that. And then she's also got badass habits, which was written with the same inimitable sass, down to earth humor and blunt practicality that made the entire You're a Badass series so beloved. Without further ado, here is Jen Sinchetto. Welcome to the Redefining Wealth Podcast, Jen. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay, you guys, I'm going to just be honest. I am fangirling completely. Jen, I You're have loved you very well <laughs> for years. I have loved you for years, and you honestly, the whole time I've been podcasting, and this will be our five year anniversary for at least three and a half, four years. Thank you. You have been on the short list of like dream people that I wanted to have a conversation with. And so I'm not even going to hold back, girl. Like I have been waiting all day to tell you that you changed my life. Oh, you changed my life. Literally, you're a badass at making money. This book is so raggedy. Don't you love to see your book looking raggedy? My favorite are the ones that have fallen into the bathtub. They're like four times their normal size from bloating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't dropped mines in the bathtub, but there's definitely been teardrops. Some of the some of the pages are a little mm, little suspect <laughs> for sure. But literally in 2019, uh, I made this book a pick for our pod club. So I was reading this book for two months with women from all over the world. 
we call them purpose chasers. Mm -hmm. Then I made it mandatory meeting for every woman who goes through one of my coaching programs. And then I just start giving it away to people as, as gifts. I send audibles, I, whatever it takes, because what I know to be true after being in this personal finance space for so long is that folks can tell you anything they want about skill set. But if you don't shift your mindset, none of it is going to work. And I have to tell you, the other day I was on Audible sending it to someone again. Like, how do I get in here and send it to someone? And I started looking at reviews. And there was a woman named Elizabeth. I don't mean to call her out, but y'all going to see it anyway. Um, there's a woman named Elizabeth, and she was like, I just don't get this. I wanted practical tips, and this is so woo-woo and just mindset. And I said, oh. Poor, poor Liz. <laughs> oh, Liz, Liz. Oh, Liz. Up. It's all part of the same party. <laughs> I'm like, Liz, you missed the entire boat. It is all mindset. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And if you start, start to shift your beliefs and your mindsets and your thoughts and it impacts your habits and all that stuff. And so I've been waiting since like 2018, 2019 to just say thank you. Well, you are very welcome. And thank you. You are clearly the reason that made the bestseller list because <laughs> now we know who's buying them all. <laughs> <laughs> buying them, giving them away. Right. Okay, so Jen, you know, it's really tempting for people to think that you may have had this mindset your entire life. But I know from reading your books that at 40, you were a hot mess. So let's, let's talk about it. Let's start with where this all began. <laughs> where do I start with the mess? Well, you know, honestly, for me, it was, I had, uh, actualized a lot of parts of my life. Like I was in a rock band and I was living by the beach and I had lots of great friends and I traveled. But the damn money thing, like that was always the dead end, the like thou shalt not pass. When I was living at the beach, I was living in an alley in a garage, but I was near the beach. Um, so for me, I just, I just could not believe that I was going to spend my one and only time on planet earth sucking at really living my life. Cause let's face it you know, money is not everything, but money is the tool that we human beings use to move through this world. And if you don't have any, it really makes it difficult and not fun. And, you know, money is just basically freedom and opportunities. And when you don't have any, your freedom and opportunities are super limited. And I just, I was, first of all, it's really boring being broke. So I was really bored. And I was also really disappointed that in myself that this was the best I could do. So those were sort of my motivations to getting it going. And at 40, I was like, geez, if I haven't figured this out yet, what? So yeah. that's why I started reading all the self-help books and studying mindset, Elizabeth. Yeah. So you know what really got me though, because I see this in my community so much, right? So I actually serve a community of high achieving women. I mean, typically when I get to you know, be around my ladies or I'm talking to people in the DMs, they have more degrees than I do. Like very intelligent, so many degrees, these really big job titles, and yet they find themselves spiraling in these same financial circumstances over and over again. And some of the stuff that you talked about in, in this book, you were talking about how you were excelling at financial mediocrity at the time. And so you're like eating, drinking, filling your pockets with anything that's free. Um, you know, employing duct tape instead of hiring professionals to repair things or expending, this is the big one that I hear a lot, spending excruciating amounts of time purchasing anything from a TV to a bedspread in order to thoroughly investigate every possible cheaper option. And when I hear people talking about that, we talk about here paying for peace. You literally are spending 30 hours re researching something to save $30. And right. you could have used those 30 hours to go make more money. Hello. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take us back to when you were in that mindset, when you were in that space. I know it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Um, 
You know, it was, you know, honestly, I remember before I shifted, before I just really got fed up and I didn't have like some big aha moment, like now I am going to go make lots of money. I just got really sick of myself. I got really bored and really sick of this idea that this is the best I can do. And I remember before that I was very stubborn. Like I remember having a lot of stubbornness around, um, you know, I didn't want to focus on money all the time. I wanted to be an artist. Meanwhile, when you're broke, all you think about is how much stuff costs. Every decision is based on how much stuff costs. So now that I have money, I kind of don't ever really think about it. So it's, that's the mm -hmm. funny cosmic joke. Um, and I really felt like I could figure it out on my own, that I didn't need help. Um, I thought rich people were jerks. I, I also had this weird thing where I felt like people who had lots of money were almost like a different species than I was. Like, I was like in this constant state of feeling like a seventh grader when it came to like doing my taxes, investments, making money. Like everybody else was kind of a grown up. Like everybody was making yeah. money was more of a grown up than I was. And I just didn't, I just didn't see myself. I didn't have that identity as somebody who could ever, ever certainly make the kind of money that I make now. I mean, it was, it really seemed impossible. So I was so inspired to write that book because truly I felt like if, if I can turn my mindset around that I was so white knuckling for 40 years and, and let it go to the point where I really am in financial flow, I, I have lots of hope for everybody out there, no matter what level they're at. Yeah. I have to tell you what was the change for me. So by the time that I um, found out about this book, I was doing okay. I was doing well. So I was already making six figures. I was already known as America's money maven. I had gone from literally losing everything in the recession and scraping up change on welfare to rebuilding. And now here I am, you know, I'm, I'm doing the thing. I'm being on interviews and I'm on nationally syndicated radio and I have all this stuff and I'm like, I'm doing well. And it wasn't until I read your book that I realized how sneaky those old school limiting beliefs still yeah. really are right. that you can have some measure of success or living, you know, like you said, like I'm living by the beach. I've, I've realized the thing and still be having these scarcity conversations. And I, I remember one of my big ones. I read your book around October and I remember we really needed to get some sales in for Q4. Like if I wanted to bring on another person to the team and do stuff like I was just going to have to do it. And I went through this exercise. There was something in the book, but I ended up writing out all of the, what I felt like were my limiting beliefs. And I got to one that struck a chord and it was, I had made up a story that people don't buy things in December because it's Christmas and their kids like need stuff, right? So I never made an offer in December. It was just a thing, completely made up. And in the book, you kind of talked about how we make up these stories and we are so committed to them, right? Mm -hmm. So I make up this story, I'm so committed, I'm reading the book and I'm like, what if I just like stop telling that story? I'm like, I should at least try in December for the first time in my entire career, we open the doors to a program. Jen, it sells out in two weeks and we bring in over six figures. Oh my God. I love that. Right before Christmas. I close the doors on like December 22nd or 23rd. Well done. And that was the beginning for me. And that's what made me a believer because mm -hmm. it was literally, and I tell my clients this all the time, one thing can change everything acknowledging that that was a limiting belief and a story I was telling myself and that I could change the story. And not even the story, it's the quote unquote truth, right? Like you took it on as truth. It's Christmas time. People don't have money. I'm not out of my mind. Like it's truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I could look for anything to confirm that. Sure. Right. You can create any, any uh, confirmation course. out there to confirm that. And ever since that time, we've never not made an offer in December. I love that story. I love that story. And it also then reminds you like, what else am I unconsciously buying into as the quote unquote truth that I'm letting in inhibit my fun? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, seriously, like it was it was a game changer and a part of why I just adore you so much. And there's something that you say in the book, too, that really helped me with that shift. It was 
um, you're talking about making money. And you're saying your excitement to share something of value with someone in order to obtain the money, your clarity on how joyful it will make that person and your gratitude that this money is coming to you. I realized how much it wasn't even about me, just me and me creating the money. I really did have something to offer the women. Yeah. It wasn't just like a, a random crappy thing. It was like, no, I have something of value to offer and I'm actually doing them a disservice by sticking to this story. Right. By not offering it to them when they obviously want it and need it. Yeah. Yeah. How was that for you when you started to like get out of your own way? Um, I know your story was around coaching as well. Mm, you know, for me with the money, of course, I was super squeamish about charging anything and especially my friends and family, like, you know, um, and I'll never forget something that my coach said to me that really just blew my tan in mind was, uh, well, there's two things. Hopefully I'll remember them. <laughs> um, so, uh, the first one was, uh, this whole idea, like she made me double the price of my online course every time I taught it. So I started out at a price that I was already throwing up in my mouth about. And then every time I taught it, I had to raise the price and lo and behold, people kept showing up. And the more I raised my price, the more freaked out I was. So the bigger I showed up, like I, you know, every time I doubled it, those people kept getting better and better and better. And when people were paying more, they showed up bigger because here's the second thing. Money is currency and currency is energy. And I had to hear that about 4,000 times before I really understood that money is energy. It's an energetic exchange between two people. And so let's say you want to take my coaching program and you're my pal and you're like, you know, can, can you give me a little, you know, a little help if I stoop down and make my price and, and my currency low for you, I'm literally vibrating at a different frequency now. Cause I've shrunk down to meet you at this lower level. I'm basically saying, you know, you obviously can't come up here where everybody else is paying. So I'm going to shrink down and we're both going to shrink. But instead, if I offer you my hand and lift you up and I'm like, come on up, the weather is great. Like, I know you can do it. That energetic exchange of money in the very, very beginning dictates so much about how everybody shows up. And I, I saw this over and over and over. In fact, there were times where I raised my prices because I wasn't selling enough and I sold more because it gave it mm -hmm. a higher frequency. It gave it, you know, yeah. It, yeah, it's really interesting. One of the things that that we always float around here is that there's no transformation without transaction. Mm. And I remember when I used to think that giving it away made me a good person. Mm. It made me more noble. Like, you know, because you would have people who say, like, if you really wanted to help me, you just give it to me. Mm. And now mm. I realize that to truly help you not me not charging you is not helping you it's not causing you to raise like you said that energy and raise to that standard and i always felt like i had been taken advantage of you know in a sense it's like i've given and given and given and you haven't done anything with it with a slap in the face right and why they have no incentive like if you don't if you don't invest you're not invested you know you're not invested in yourself and i do want to say though like the in in that whole giving away I don't think giving away to clients is a way to go, but like once you've taken care of yourself, and made all the money, then you can do stuff for free all day long. Yeah, for sure. Right? Because there's that whole, I have so, I knew so many people who would work for nothing and give all their time and energy away and they were spread so thin. And it's like, and I understand the desire to do that. And I certainly give lots of money away and do lots of things for yeah. free. But but it's a different frequency. Again, it's money is currency, currency is energy. It's coming from a different energy. I have completely taken care of myself. I have the, you know, I have that currency. I have that frequency. And then I have so much more to give because I've let myself earn a lot of money. Yeah. So what are some ways that people can start shifting their mindset, not just about money, but just about their lives in general? I know that you're a big fan of affirmations as I am like I have used affirmations for so many years and I, I really credit getting in that mindset uh, mm. to helping me shift my life. But sure. what do you or, or how do you mm. use the power of words to continue to shape your life? 
Well, first I do what you did. And I look at the words and the stories that I've been saying all along, like I can't, it's impossible. You know, what, what quote unquote truths have I been spewing about forever that are not true. So the first thing really is awareness and questioning what you've got going on. Uh, and then, you know, I, I have my story in that book about how I was always saying, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. And when I made the decision to change my life, I can't afford it went to money flows to me easily and freely. And believe me, I was still in the garage. I was still driving a car with no grill, but I was much more interested in the energy of that, right? Like, even though it wasn't quote unquote true yet, the energy that it brought to me, the, the feeling of like flow and ease. Are you kidding me? That was amazing. So I could get excited about that feeling. And it's all about feeling, guys. So that's where your words, like really watch what you talk about and watch, watch what you think about. And, um, you know, I've been listening to a lot of Abraham Hicks lately. I don't know if you know their work, but, uh, but they really, they recommend something that I think is so interesting also. Like if you just are like hard hardened in this belief that you suck at making money and it's not okay to make money. Nah, nah, nah. There's a lot of momentum with that. I had 40 years of momentum. So another great way to do it is if money flowing easily, money flows to me easily and freely is, is just too hard to buy in the beginning. Like you're like, Oh, whatever. Like seriously, you can start just feeling good about anything, like watching your words and watching what you focus on to sort of raise your frequency and ignore the old momentum so that it slows down a little and then mm -hmm. focus all your attention on it. it because yeah. we, we are emotional beings and we are vibrating at certain frequencies. And so when you can just in general, raise your frequency and feel better, when you feel better, it's so much easier to look at the stuff that you're struggling with than when you feel like crap. So get yourself in that better feeling space first and then money flows to me easily and freely becomes your mantra, you know? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I understand what it means to start saying this stuff and you're like, mm, mm -hmm. but I'm broke and I have an eviction notice and I'm chasing right. down the power man with my baby on my hip, yep. begging them to turn the, the power back on or her milk will spoil, but I do remember during those seasons and even now just just sticking to it. I think the thing is we give up so quickly mm -hmm. um, and then I'm always like looking for evidence of it. So even if we're saying money flows to me easily and freely, I started to acknowledge that as pennies on the ground. Right. Absolutely. It, it wasn't big checks. Nope. But you then know. you look at what you do have. Like I, you know, I am wearing a shirt that cost money. You know, I bought a cup of coffee this morning. So there are ways, you know, because, because when you're focused on, I can't afford it, you're also looking for proof of that. So when you're looking for proof of how hard it is to make money and how much risk rich people suck and how you can't afford it, you will find proof. There is proof of everything everywhere all of the time. So when you decide that money flows to me easily and freely, one of the most important things your words do and your shift of focus does is it makes you start looking for proof of that. And it's everywhere, even doesn't matter how big, you just need proof. Yeah. And that opens you up to a whole new world. It really is interesting how many worlds we are surrounded by at all times. And based on our words and our focus, we will experience different things. Yeah, that is so true. I, I was just talking to um, an acquaintance, I would say, not a friend, but an acquaintance the other day. And it was amazing how we could take the same experience and have two totally different right? like thought processes around it. Like they, I, they quickly went down a spiral and I was just standing there like, I mean, it's not that bad, <laughs> like, you know, and it, yeah. I just couldn't see why it was so bad. But I realized too, I've trained my brain to look for the good, right. to look for the lesson, to look for the blessing. So even when things are difficult, not to say I don't have bad days because life is life, but I just don't find myself spiraling the way right. I did many years ago. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it is, it's like a muscle because you've built up that muscle of awareness and focus. And it, it really, it's just a muscle. We've all got the ability to do it. It's just, you got to not the drama, man. I mean, you've got to really, we're so invested in the drama and whining and getting pity and feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, it's much more fun to feel good. It really is. And one thing that I know makes us feel good is our environment. So mm -hmm. here at Redefining Wealth, we talk about the space pillar. 
And we're always talking about, again, you know, like you said, we're energetic beings, our emotions matter, and our space can either lift us up or completely like freaking depress us and send us into those spirals. And another like part in, in this book, and then I'm going to get to your other book because I love all your stuff. But um, another part in You're a Badass at Making Money that really connected with me, you were probably one of the first people that helped validate my experience. And I'm going to tell you just this quick story. So when I lost everything and I was at the point of scraping up change, I was in New Orleans. I had lost my 6,000 square foot home foreclosed in California and was living in a 600 square foot box of an apartment in Metairie, Louisiana, in not the best neighborhood with a with a new baby and a new husband at the time. And I remember hating that space so much because it just felt like this is not what I worked for. Why am I here? I had built this successful business, lost it all. And I found while digging through looking for coins (laughs) looking for money really I found a target gift card that someone had sent us for the baby and I was like if this if if this is it I'm going to use this to spruce up this place and I remember I could have made a decision to get formula or any number of things I went to target and I went straight to the clearance um where that they had for like bathroom stuff And the bathroom was the only place that seemed kind of closed where you could have personal space. And I was like, if I'm going to spend time in here, it's going to be cute. So I got all this clearance stuff. It was a shower curtain, a little bath mat, um, little dividers or something to organize stuff. The bathroom was teeny tiny. And this stuff was red and black. It wasn't even my vibe, but it all matched. And I was like, it is what it is, (laughs) right? And I spent like this $30 gift card on getting this stuff for that bathroom. And I remember shooting on myself, like, you should be using this for Mm. food or groceries or this or that. But it was just something in me that was like, you have got to clean up, like, make this space Mm. feel better. And it was in that bathroom, Jen, that I had, like, like my ugly cry come to Jesus moment Mm. where the download for what I do today came to me in that bathroom a few weeks after I had spruced it all up because I was always in there. I was just always in there. It was the only place I could get away from my family. I have goosebumps. It was a game changer. And I'm telling you, you wrote in the book about surroundings can depress you and raising the frequency of your surroundings is so important in your physical environment. And I remember when I first added space to redefining wealth, how many people were like, space what does that have to do with anything and i'm like your environment freaking matters yes and you know and oh i that is such a great story and you said something that is everything is you're like it made me feel better it's all about feeling guys like it really truly is and that's where mindset comes in and all that stuff like you, you do have a choice in every moment to feel good or feel bad. And believe me, like we all feel bad. It's not this Pollyanna. You got to feel good all the time Mm -hmm. and taking the time, but, but really being aware of things and people and words and spaces that make you feel good and making that a priority because the better you feel, the more good feeling things you'll be noticing. And the more good feeling things you'll be noticing, the better you'll feel. And then the more good things you'll be noticing. So it is, it's one of those things It builds and builds and builds. So if it starts out as a bath mat, and grows into what you have created. I mean, it really, it really is so powerful. And I, and I remember when I started doing all this work, I was like, oh, come on. Like my words, beliefs, and thoughts are going to get me out of this one car garage apartment in the alley that I'm living in. I was so grouchy because I was like, I cannot have gotten to 40 and it can't be that easy. I would, I wanted it to be harder. I wanted there to be a much bigger mystery and it is, it is appalling and awesome how little of a mystery it is. I am not saying that you do not have to work and that you don't have to do scary things and all that stuff, but I am saying it is not even close to how hard most of us make it. Not even. When I started podcasting, I had nothing, no fancy equipment, no cover art, no theme music. I just had this burning desire that I was supposed to use my purpose of helping people redefine wealth in the podcasting space. 
And so with some intentional planning, I launched what became the Redefining Wealth Podcast in just three weeks. That was four years ago. And today, the Redefining Wealth Podcast has over 9 million downloads. We've interviewed everyone from celebrities to entertainers to authors and thought leaders. We've been featured everywhere from Success Magazine to Cosmopolitan and even Good Morning America. Now, why do I share all that? Because I'm not special. The truth is, this started with leaning into my purpose and being willing to use my voice in a powerful way. And I bet that there's something that's calling you as well, something that you need to use your voice to amplify in the marketplace. So I wanna help you do that. If you're finally ready to use your voice and launch a podcast that aligns with your purpose, I wanna invite you to check out my intentional online training, Podcast with Purpose. You can find out more details at podcastwithpatrice.com. That's podcastwithpatrice.com. Your purpose deserves to be amplified, and I want to help you do that. Why do you think most of us make it so hard? Is it just because that's what we grew up seeing? That's what we've heard? I think so. I think it's what's familiar. I think because we see so much struggle around, I think it is. I really do think it's probably a learned experience, but that's a really good question. I, but, but, you know, you know, what I grew up hearing is you got to, you know, you got to work hard. If you work hard, you make money. Like it really goes hand in hand and, And yeah, this, this thing of ease is so frowned upon somehow, but really following the path of least resistance is the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I can say as a a woman of color, I've, I grew up hearing all the time that we needed to work twice as hard or three times as hard as the next person to be considered half as good. And for much of my life, starting really young, I was very addicted to achievement. It was very much like always, even now, I have to constantly remind myself to freaking pull back and create space and margin on my calendar because Mm -hmm. it's so easy to slip into doing all the things. And I have to look at it and get sick and tired of being sick and tired of myself and go, girl, what are you doing? Why why is your schedule so jam-packed? Like, why have you not eaten lunch today? What in the world, right? But it is easy to get into that cycle, even with all the personal development and that idea that that seed that is planted for so many of us that we have to work hard. It it felt like highway robbery to make that offer back in December of 2018 and do over six figures in less than two weeks. With, and I and I did not have funnels and any of the fancy things that people Uh talk about. I was literally like, hey. Hey y'all, um, I want to do this thing. Here's my vision. I made a video. I invited some folks to a call and people were like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm cool. signing up for that. And it was the mindset shift even now when I talk to some of my clients, but also friends and they are doing 99 different things yeah. for their launch. And I'm like, I'm almost certain. And, and like you said, I'm not saying that I don't work. Mm -hmm. but I realized that more of it is up here than it is in me, like physically doing things. It's so interesting, isn't it? It really, I mean, we do live in a culture that values productivity and, 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 you know, and, you know, honestly, for me, ever since the pandemic, I mean, I have slowed down so massively that I can barely answer an email these days. I got (laughs) put on a bra for you. This was a big day, (laughs) but I'm, and, but it's, and it's been really interesting because I was like, well, there's value in this, like watching the sunrise and, you know, making a cup of coffee for 10 minutes or whatever. But, uh, There's, I I personally, I don't know. I just, I found it a very interesting space to be in because I too have always been such a workaholic and, and I'm plugging, the pendulum swang really far the other way, truly. Like it's been pretty, (laughs) pretty crazy over here, but I'm getting back into it. And I'm very, very um, uh, aware, however, of not getting sucked back into the workaholic part yeah and, and and finding a nice balance and it's, it's it's such a luxury to be able to to have that space but i'm it's such an interesting conversation actually yeah yeah you know one of my favorite affirmations back in the day was i work because i want to not because i have to mm. 
And I remember saying that so much, like all of them and money comes to me easy and freely, like all, like all the things and I'm a money magnet, but that is the one where I, I just recognized recently that the truth is I really don't have to work as much as I do. Thankfully, right. I love what I do. Right. And so cool. But I'm like, you can say these things so much until it really becomes reality. And then you're like, who? Oh, huh, there's a novel idea. But then you can still yeah. live in the old reality, too. Sure. And and again, like you saying, I work because I want to work now because I have to makes it feel better. And so, you know, for everybody out there who's just like, good for you guys, you know, <laughs> It like think about it because I'm trying to think about it from where I used to be. Yeah. Um, there were things about my work that I loved. And yes, I was doing a lot of stuff I did not want to do because I needed the money and I had to hustle. Um, and I do want to say, like, as somebody who's gotten to a place where I don't have to work anymore, it's you want to work. Like, it's really bringing up this stuff in me where it's like, I enjoy it. I have stuff to give. I want projects. I want to help people. I want to be engaged. So if you can somehow try and unhook from the, the need to work part of yourself that you may be in right now, which I, I totally can relate to that mm -hmm. and just unhook from it for a second and be like, okay, I want to work. Like I want, what is it about my work that I want to do that? Like if I literally had nothing to do all day, every single day, you would get bored. I promise you. Oh yeah. Right. So lot, be aware in this moment while you're doing lots of things that you probably don't love doing, but you are doing some things you love doing. And if you can focus on the things you love doing and how they affect other people and how it affects your bank account or whatever, it'll make you feel better. So you want to focus on the stuff that makes you feel better, which is the stuff that you love about what you're doing. Yeah. Cause that feeling is what creates the fulfillment. And yes. I really believe that, you know, the lack of fulfillment is the thing that actually keeps people um, that will keep us making poor financial decisions. Mm -hmm. Usually when there's lack of fulfillment, it creates that void. And mm -hmm. for many people, they're trying to fill the void with stuff, things, mm -hmm. other people, vices, you name it. Right. And all that becomes expensive. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> that starts to impact your finances and your ability to build wealth. Um, but, and, and I think for many of us, it creates just poor habits. And I know that, Another one of your books is just about is about habits, which I thought was amazing. Badass habits in 2020. Um, and so there's definitely that connection. There's something you say here, even in this in this book, you talk about habits. Let me go back. You were talking about connecting your new habit to another habit or behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so you talk about, let's say you want to get into the habit of being more focused. You could team this with shutting off your cell phone and putting it away from your work around habits. What have you seen that just keeps us stuck and not being able to create new habits and achieve the things we say we want? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I think, and I think this is a problem with a lot in a lot of areas, but, uh, decide like uh, not chunking it down. So deciding I'm going to make a million dollars or I'm going to start running 50 miles a day, or I'm going to stop drinking this year. And like, you know, new year's Eve, those are all the last drinks you have. And then, and then by February you're back at the bar. So it really is about chunking it down and taking smaller bites of things and really doing it day by day. And, and I talk about this in badass habits a lot is about your, it's more about your identity than what you're doing, which is kind of the same thing about us in money mindset versus action. You know, it's about who you're being, not necessarily what you're doing. So with habits, a lot of us change what we're doing, which is important. But if the, if the identity piece isn't there, you will not last. So, um, and please tell me to stop talking. If, if I no, know I know. I love this. I want you to give us an example. Okay. Of yeah, this. I'm going to give you an yeah. example. Okay. So for me, um, it's smoking. Like I was the kind of smoker who just, I let that first cigarette of the day. Like I'm going to actually start smoking again when I'm 80 and I'm super excited about it. But, um, so anyway, I do, I, I love those things, but they're disgusting and they were killing me and whatever. So I was very excited to quit smoking and I quit all the time and I would start all the time. And it wasn't until I shifted my identity accidentally around smoking, where I stopped negotiating with 
oh, I'll have a drag or, you know, just tonight I'm going to smoke. You know, it's not a big whoop de doo And I'd automatically be up to pack a day right after that. But when I changed my identity as somebody who wasn't an ex smoker or somebody who hadn't quit smoking, I changed it to somebody who was healthy, who was in charge of her life, who was in control of her actions. I didn't even bring smoking into the equation because somebody who's never smoked isn't an ex smoker, doesn't have smoking in the equation. So it really becomes sort of like, I don't negotiate when I wake up in the morning, whether or not to drink a bottle of vodka, because that's not who I am. So mm. when I wasn't an ex smoker anymore, and I wasn't, you know, when I was much more focused on my health and doing things that were healthy, the cigarettes weren't even in my radar. So it really has so much to do with your focus, right? So when you identify, so this is why I say, if you're going to start running every day and you don't run at all right now, even just putting on your damn sneakers and running to the end of the driveway to get the paper and coming back, like you're getting it's in the start. Habit. Yes. You're getting in the habit of the habit. You are somebody who runs, who that is a part of your day and you're starting to adopt that identity. Yeah, that is so true. It's, mm -hmm. it's also, you know, when I think about money stuff here at Redefining Wealth, I think about someone who says, who, who makes their identity, I am a saver. Mm. Right. So if your identity is a saver, then you're not really window shopping every weekend because for what? Right. Or you're not surfing online all the time like that becomes time that you can renegotiate and spend on another goal or something else you want. But the amount of time I uh, like the amount of time that my girlfriends, for example, who are very they're un unapologetic, like, girl, you're the saver. We're the spenders. That's fine. Right. But they are unapologetic about like, oh, it's Saturday. I'm going to go stroll around the mall. It never occurs to me to do that and spend my Saturday that way because I'm not a shopper. I'm, I'm more of a saver. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't make sense for me to just go do that and that to be my thing every Saturday. You right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so if you start to identify, like you're saying, with a certain identity of some kind, it really does inform all of your decisions, your behaviors, and therefore eventually your results. Absolutely, which is why, again, it's so important to catch yourself in how you're identifying as I am X, right? Question it. Like, I don't care if you have 40 years of proof that you can't make money, that I am someone who sucks at making money. That's how I identified forever, mm -hmm. right? And it was the truth, you know, the quote unquote truth. I was living in a garage. So identity is just what you've decided about yourself. You know, it it's all so fluid and we get to make these decisions and we don't even realize the truths that we bought into. There's a great phrase in this book that I read 8 trillion times when I was getting my money poop in a scoop. Uh, the Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a line in it that I think I quoted in Badass at Making Money that um, to think the truth. Oh, please. Okay. Oh, damn it. I can't remember it. It's like to, to think the truth. Huh, the truth is basically what you think it is, regardless of appearances. I totally butchered it, but I didn't want to spend the rest of our no. time. <laughs> <laughs> but it really is like what you decide to think is the truth, regardless yeah. of appearances. So, yeah, I know it's like crazy times when you're like, oh, I am rich and I'm in a loving relationship, and da, 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 even though, you know, you have no evidence of it yet. It's that frequency and that energy and, and that will start to bring it to you. Because if you are focused on what you do not have and what you do not like, you will start pulling in more of that. Yeah. One of the things we say is that what we verbalize, we magnify and magnetize. Mm -hmm. And so if we keep verbalizing what we don't want, what we don't have, what's wrong, we're only going to amplify it more yeah. and just yeah. continue to find that evidence. Um, one of the things you talk about too, um, is it, you emphasize the importance of doing things that scare you. Mm, why yeah. is that? I know. Why is that? <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, so because, you know, we talk a lot about the comfort zone in our work, uh, but I actually prefer the familiarity zone because the comfort zone is not terribly comfortable, right? Like my comfort zone was being broke and hanging out with people who bitched and moaned about having no money. Like that was what I was used to doing. So that was my comfort zone, but it was my familiarity zone. 
Um, and so basically you have to scare the crap out of yourself on a regular basis because humans are terrified of the unfamiliar. So if it's familiar and it's comfortable, it is not scary. So you know when you're scared, you're doing something new because you got to where you are right now by doing everything you're doing and thinking everything you're thinking and saying everything you're saying. Mm -hmm. To change that is going to be unfamiliar and scary. So I talk a lot about, uh, it's not about, you know, jumping off a, you know, bungee jumping or, you know, unless that's your thing, but it's that fear and excitement where it's like, you know, two sides at, of the same coin. Yes, exactly. It's, it's actually the same feeling, right? Like I yeah. feel terror and excitement in my chest. It's the same feeling. So you want that terror excitement, you know, whatever that mix of terror and excitement. And then, you know, I, I truly believe that if all of us, regardless of if it's finding love or they're making money or growing your business or, you know, whatever your thing is, if you scare the crap out of yourself on a daily basis in the direction that you want to go, I, your life will change so quickly. You won't even know it hit you, it, it, but it's really about taking that chance and stepping outside. So I, it's kind of a fun game. And, and this is another thing that I talk about a lot. It's like, just see what you can get away with. Take away the drama, like just see if you can double your income this year. Just see if you can double your income this month, this week. Why not? We're on a ball in infinite space right now, people. Who cares? Like, make it a game. It, we don't, it, it's all so bizarre anyway. Why not just see if you can get away with it? I just think, you know, we get so weighted down by the drama and the cancer and how hard it is. And we're on a ball in infinite space. I just, I think we get weighted down by our concept of reality. Yes. Like, You're oh, right. or this is, this is what's realistic yes. for me. Yeah. But who said, yes, like who said that's the, the most you can make or who said that you have to stay in student loan debt or who said you have to continue to live this way. And we're yeah. so weighted down by these ideas many times that are not even our own, but we're just kind of on autopilot with our junk and other people's junk that came before us. Absolutely. I mean, most of the time it's not even our own. We've, we've adopted, we've taken it on as the quote unquote truth from our parents and society and our friends. And then you start saying it. I love that expression caught in a rut. I'm stuck in a rut because I really believe that our thoughts, it's almost like an album. If you're old enough to remember what a record album is. Oh, I guess, <laughs> I guess they're cool again. Um, but anyway, so like a rut where it just keeps digging, you say the same words and the same thoughts and the same beliefs over and over. And it creates a literal rut in your brain. So when you start saying things like money flows to me easily and freely, you're pulling yourself out of that rut and creating a new one. Right. But it's, mm. but it's so deep from all of the attention it's gotten over the years and you can absolutely shift it. But that's, that's how you, that's why it feels so heavy and so stuck is because it's so deep from all the attention. Yeah. Just spiraling in those cycles, just yeah. going, 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 you know, as, as someone who has such great influence and, and impact, I have to ask you going back to our friend Liz in the beginning, when you <laughs> hear about people who just don't get it, mm. what do you say to yourself? Because I serve a community of mostly women entrepreneurs and oftentimes they are so committed to the idea that their job is to save everyone oh and e everybody needs to understand. And I see them spiraling in these conversations with people who are just maybe not ready yet or they, it's just not for them or they don't get it. How do you get past those, the Liz's of the world and continue to show up and serve the way that you do? Well, I think just, and believe me, I was a big old soapbox stander forever when I was first learning this because it's such a waste of time and energy on both ends. Like, and, and all of these women entrepreneurs you're talking about who are doing this, like there was a time when they couldn't hear it either. So, you know, if you're running your when own business, none of us could, neither right. of us could, there was a of, time. I'm of course. Sure. Yeah. Of course. And so it's none of your business. They will come to it when they come to it. Seriously, like you cannot change somebody who doesn't want to be changed. So the best thing you can do is just, just keep kicking as much ass as you can and model that behavior. And eventually Liz may pick up the phone and call you, but Liz is on her own journey. You know, unless Liz asks for help, it's not your job to give it to her. Yeah. One of my girlfriends, Christine Hassler says, you have to give people the dignity of their own process. 
Mm, and I love even, that. even the troll, like even a troll and, and not that if you review and you leave a negative review, you're a troll. I'm saying right. you have the right to your review, but then there's also trolls in real life. And mm -hmm. so either one of them, anybody, everyone deserves the dignity of their own process. And it's not for me to stop doing right. what I'm called to do to keep trying to convince other people who may just not be ready or I'm not their messenger. I could also not I, be the messenger for them. And it's also interesting to ask yourself why you feel like it's your job to change them. Ooh, what? Ooh. Who said that's your job? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pla <laughs> platform accelerated. You heard her answer. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jen, before I let you go, I want to don't ask let you. Me go, but I, I don't want, I literally would talk to you all day. Like right. I have looked forward to this. All day long. I, <laughs> true story. I was up at three thirty three this morning. You are so awesome. I just love you. I Seriously. really. It's been such a treat. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I get. To, oh my gosh. Okay, so whew, <laughs> let me ask you um, what we call these rapid wisdom questions here on redefining wealth. You're just going to tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. All right. Number one. How do you define success? Uh, by doing things that make you happy on a daily basis. How do you define wealth in three words or less? Financially free. Look at you. Most people go over. I, I'm, I'm a goody goody. <laughs> I follow rules really well. <laughs> okay. What's one book that has redefined how you see wealth? Oh, the signs of getting rich for sure. Yeah. Yes. All right. Fill in the blanks. My name is, and to me, the truth about wealth is. My name is Jen. And the truth to me about wealth is, is that it is more about flow and energy and mindset than anything else. Amen. Amen. Jen, thank mm. you so much for being here. Thank you so much. This was just so much fun. So much fun. Such a dream come true. Um, mm -hmm. How can folks connect with you out there in the interwebs? In the interwebulous, um, jensincero.com, J-E-N-S-I-N-C-E-R-O.com. And then Jen Sincero on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And then, uh, and if you go to youareabadass.com, that will also get you to my website because nobody remembers how to spell Sincero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you guys listen. All of the You Are Badass books. So, You Are Badass How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life. Um, You're a Badass at Making Money, Master the Mindset of Wealth. You're a Badass Every Day. I mean, the Badass Habits. You cannot go wrong, I mm -hmm. believe, with any of the books that you pick up. But if you ask me, I'm all I'm always, because I'm a money girl. So, of course, I'm always going to have to start here. Um, again, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Purpose chasers. You know, I only say things that I absolutely believe. And this is one of those books. You see it. It's it's raggedy. It, it has teardrops <laughs> in it. It has all the things. There's notes all in the margins. To be honest with you, when I was flipping through this morning, Jen, I read where I wrote something that said, ask her on the podcast. I don't know what gave me the idea two, three years ago, I guess, that I was going to have a chance to ask you on the podcast. Um, but this was even better than whatever I probably underlined because I couldn't <laughs> find it again. <laughs> but just knowing that it was there in the margins and that the I, seed was planted. Right. And that is it's this stuff works, you guys. Like I know like the woo woo and the la di da and all that. It freaking works. And you know, it it I don't I don't even know what to say. And I was the most skeptical person in the entire world. And I am now preaching it on the mountain. So yeah, yeah, it is, it is real. So you guys, if I say it, you know I truly believe it. This book has been a game changer. Every time we're going into launch mode, I flip through, I I get some more mindset things because it's easy to slip back in to the old stuff. I was I was that person much longer than I've been this person. So it's easy to go back. So I believe in this. Get you a copy. Listen to it on Audible. It will bless you. Um, check in with me in social. Tag me and let me know what you thought about this episode. Seek Wisdom PCW. Also, don't forget to rate 
review and subscribe to the podcast if this is your first time here. And until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without feeling like you have to chase money. Talk to you later.